on June 1, 2007, with the student body looking on. Representatives of the school board, as well as alumni, architects, staff, and students of Shadle, turned the first shovels of dirt in what was to be a three-year modernization process. It's now time to turn over the first shovels of earth that mark the official beginning of the Shadle Park High School modernization project. As soon as school was let out for summer break, an army of contractors mobilized on the six-acre site to begin the demolition and rebuilding of the Northwest Spokane landmark. The contractors' trailers and hard hat workers would become a fixture on the site as demolition, excavation, and reconstruction began rolling across the campus. We got our power out of tradition and legacy. It does have a lot of tradition, and as people leave Shadle, they remember that and they pass that down. It was really cool. Like the first con that we had on the first day of my freshman year, we have the bagpipes and drummers and the Highland dancers come in. It's amazing to be able to have that as part of our school. When your children get ready to go to Shadle, you know, they're excited because of all, all the great things that they've heard about the school and just that, you know, tradition and that, um, that great feel that it has. I loved wearing the kilts. I mean, it was marvelous to be so different. It was early in the 1950s and the population of the city was rapidly expanding especially in the northwest part of town. The baby boomers were filling up not only houses, but the school system as well. The school board and citizens saw the need for a fourth high school in Spokane. And by 1955, the drawings for Shadel Park High School had been approved by the school board, and the new school was well on its way. Shadel Park High School is a, is a great example of the modern style of architecture in Spokane and it was designed in a time period when uh, the modern style of architecture had uh, just originated. The glass and stone look with distinct lines, repetitive geometry, and long corridors housing classrooms was a unique departure from more traditional stone and mortar buildings in the area. Construction began in May of 1956, and by September of 1957, the latest addition to the school district was ready for students and staff. We had to start every club. Every, there was nothing here. We were that first class. So if you wanted to have a future teachers club, you had to start it. So you had to have an officer. If you wanted to start um, some sort of service club, we had to start everything. We got to do everything. We got to write all the songs, do, pick the colors, pick the names. I think it came down at the end between uh, it was either going to be the Trojans or the Highlanders. Well, I was going into nursing, and Penny was too, and so we started the, the, the Shireen, we started the nursing, Future Nurses of America. The plan from the beginning was to fill the school with 8th, 9th, and 10th graders who would become the first Shadel Park High graduating classes. It was a welcome relief to the overcrowded conditions at both North Central and Rogers High Schools, which had been at capacity for some time. I ended up at Shadle because I was really in the North Central District, but North Central High School in that time did not allow any girls in music to be in the marching band. Shadle was opening, so I came to Shadle. By the beginning of the new millennium, with almost five decades of capacity-filled use, the 201,000 square foot building was feeling its age. Students and staff had to contend with frequent repairs and maintenance on the outdated mechanical and building systems. Educational programs and their needs were constantly changing and pushing against the limited boundaries of the old building. New technologies in energy efficiency and savings were out of reach. It became obvious, Shadel would have to be modernized. The Spokane community has a long history of supporting Spokane Public Schools and ensuring its children have safe, secure, and well-maintained schools in which to learn and grow. 
In March of 2003, after a series of community forums seeking input to establish modernization priorities, the citizens of Spokane voted for a $168 million district-wide improvement bond. This bond investment provided for the renovation of three elementary schools and modernization of two high schools, John R. Rogers and Shadle Park. The architects did a wonderful job of retaining the theme of the Glass Palace. That's what Shadle Park was known as from the time that it was originally designed and, and built. Um, and with the new uh, advances in technology and energy and these other kinds of things, we're able to retain the glass palace feel here, which means there's tremendous natural light throughout the entire building. Shadle's modernization was challenging on several fronts. First, though it borders one of the larger parks in the city, the school district only owns about one quarter of the 40 plus acre site. This meant that a full-on remodel would not be possible and that the construction would have to be in phases. It also required relocating key facilities, including the gym and offices. Absolutely made sense. When Shadle Park was built and opened for business in the fall of 1957, Ash was a two-way street. This was the getting toward the northern boundary of, of the city of Spokane. Uh, in over 50 years, obviously, that changed dramatically, and now Ash is a major arterial, one way, lots of traffic, uh, and just from an aesthetic standpoint, it absolutely made sense to me to flip our entrance 180 degrees so it faces Shadle Park. And so it just seemed almost logical to flip the school around and have some of the uh, main features of the building uh, face the park and create this uh, connection between the school and the park. A small community of portable classrooms was installed on the north side of the site for the major portion of renovation. Students maneuvered the labyrinth of construction fences and sealed off doorways throughout the construction as the contractor's team worked to keep major systems of power, heating, and ventilation active. Um, that we were able to conduct school in a manner that really was legitimate and maintain the quality of education that our students deserve and their parents expect of us. Um, the students were amazingly resilient. The thing that was very nice is that uh, every few months, you know, every six months or so, they were able to see something new. So they were able to see the, uh, the progress through the three years of construction. Field Elementary School would play one last important role in its 60-year history providing much needed classroom space to students and staff while their new building was gutted and modernized. It's a little sad to see Field School go, but I love the fact that you saved the brick. And in fact, when I drove into the parking lot, I thought, oh, you know, it, it made me feel good about that. First up, pour the footings for what would be the new library along Ash Street on the east side. At the same time, demolish the pools on the west side to make way for what would become the new main gymnasium and athletic training facilities. Phase one would also see a commons cafeteria area completed and the first set of 18 classrooms. These would be on the north end of the first through third floors and would be ready for occupancy by fall of 2008. The modernization allowed for new technologies and more efficient mechanical systems to be installed. It also provided much more efficient circulation for the public and students. Uh, the challenge then, of course, was how do we let people know that the building is different and how, does it, how do people find the main entry um, when it's not readily visible from the, from the main streets. And so we developed this promenade that I'm standing in right now, which stretches, it's a big pedestrian path that stretches all the way from Wellesley through the Commons, which is the main entry to the school, all the way to Longfellow. And one of the main features of that promenade is this lighthouse. It will act like a lighthouse does for sailors, a signal to direct people where to travel and how to find their way through the site. A large multifunctional central commons, which was lacking in the previous design, became a focal point at the main entrance. The multi-purpose area can be converted from lunchroom to a space for community and school events within minutes. It's busy before school and 
at lunch and after school and there's so many different people and it's where everybody can kind of interact and it kind of like brings the school together. We have lunchtime activities there. It's just a lot of fun pretty much all the time. Despite record-breaking snow that closed schools for several additional days during the winter of 2008-2009, Garco Construction kept to an already tight schedule to complete the large second phase of the project. This included the administration area, public offices, and teaching spaces north of the library on the first floor. The second and third floor general education classrooms not completed in phase one were also finished. Uh, we've also been very fortunate to get a lot of students in, uh, involved in the construction process. Uh, it's been something that we, we've uh, enjoyed getting them out to see the job sites and have had quite a few uh, um, youth get into the apprenticeship programs uh, through that process. Phase three saw the gutting and renovation of the more complex specialty classrooms on the north side of the school, including science and professional technical education rooms. These spaces required additional specialty equipment and designs that are unique to some special programs offered at Shadle Park. The horticulture course is well known for the intensity and thoroughness of its curriculum, and a new greenhouse was designed for this program. Likewise, the introduction of computers into the worlds of photography, design, conventional skilled trades, and engineering also required unique spaces and equipment to grow with future demands. The biggest change that we're going to see in education is going to be around technology. We can't even imagine yet what that's going to mean, and yet we had to have the infrastructure in place to be able to be flexible enough and responsible enough to embrace those changes just in technology that are just over the horizon. Well, we learned to type on electric typewriters, and they don't have any in the building. Um, they have just the computers. So that, that's a very big different thing. You know, when we yes. came here, it was state of the art. It was the best that, of the best. And from what little I've seen, it's maintaining that. It's, it's now best of the best, too. Shadle Park High School has a long tradition of excellence in the performing arts. Band, orchestra, dance, and theater at the school have introduced thousands of students to the joy that a stage performance can bring. We did have state-of-art um, facilities for band, for choir. We had practice rooms. Um, we, and we hosted a lot of guests, artists, and they used us the band and the orchestra to be back up. I mean, it was a wonderful experience. The original 1,200-seat auditorium, so well-remembered for countless cons, pep rallies, and productions, was in need of a complete makeover. The other thing that is just so incredibly beautiful is the transformation of the auditorium uh, from an auditorium to a performing arts theater. Um, it is state-of-the-art. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the lighting, the acoustics, the sight lines, uh, there's no better place in Spokane. To bring the 50-year-old space into the 21st century required a complete gutting of the interior. Excavation was necessary to improve sight lines for the audience. Acoustics were greatly improved with tuning reflectors, and modern computer-controlled lighting and sound systems were installed. The new auditorium is staged to continue bringing Spokane audiences the great talent and performances that Shadle Park is known for well into the new century. And yet we made some dramatic changes. Uh, and even with those dramatic changes, people come back to us and say, it still looks like our Shadle. Uh, they want to see a school, they want to be able to come back to a school that's still vibrant. They want to come back to a school that is still beautiful. Tens of thousands of students have been a part of Shadle Park High School. Relationships that span over a half century have roots in these halls. With this modernization comes a reconnection with the traditions and legacy that make Shadle unique. A history that remembers and honors the past with eyes out the window toward the future. I met my first husband here. <laughs> in the hallway on St. Hawkins Day. <laughs> I will always remember just the rich tradition that Shadle offered. I thought I would feel very different about having it torn down and 
or not torn down, but just changed so much because it's not what, you know, you don't walk the halls. It doesn't feel like the halls I walked. It's very different. At the same time, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. I just know in my heart of hearts that this quality facility is going to be loved by the students. And they're going to have great pride in it. If you go to another school, it's just, you know, whatever. But if you go to Shadol, I think it's kind of a cool thing to be able to say that you went, well, especially since the construction, like that you went to a brand new, amazing school.